From Here to Eternity. From Here to Eternity is a 1953 American romantic drama film directed by Fred Zinneman, and written by Daniel Daradash, based on the novel of the same name by James Jones. The picture deals with the tribulations of three U.S. Army soldiers, played by Burt Lancaster, Montgomery Clift, and Frank Sinatra, stationed on Hawaii in the months leading up to the attack on Pearl Harbor. Deborah Kerr and Donna Reed portray the women in their lives, and the supporting cast includes Ernest Borgnine, Philip Ober, Jack Warden, Mickey Shaughnessy, Claude Akins, and George Reeves. The film won eight Academy Awards out of 13 nominations, including awards for Best Picture, Best Director, Adapted Screenplay, Supporting Actor, and Supporting Actress. The film's title originally comes from a quote from Rudyard Kipling's 1892 poem Gentleman Ranker about soldiers of the British Empire who had lost, their, way and were damned from here to eternity. In 2002, From Here to Eternity was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. In 1941, Buchler and career soldier Private Robert E. Lee Pruitt transfers to a rifle company at Schofield Barracks on the island of Oahu. Captain Dana Dynamite Holmes has heard he is a talented middleweight boxer, and wants him to join his regimental team to secure a promotion for Holmes. Pruitt refuses, having stopped fighting because he blinded his sparring partner and close friend over a year before. Holmes makes life as miserable as possible for Pruitt hoping that he will change his mind, and then orders First Sergeant Milton Warden to prepare general court-martial papers, after Sergeant Golovich first insults Pruitt and then gives an unreasonable order that Pruitt refuses to obey. Warden suggests, however, that he try to get Pruitt to change his mind by doubling up on company punishment. The other non-commissioned officers join in the hazing, and Pruitt is supported only by his close friend, Private Angelo Maggio. Meanwhile, Warden, at the risk of a prison sentence, begins an affair with Holmes' neglected wife, Karen. Sergeant Malon Stark has told Warden about Karen's many previous affairs at Fort Bliss, including with himself, though he adds there's something mighty strange about that woman. As their relationship develops, Warden asks Karen about her affairs to test her sincerity, and Karen relates that Holmes has been unfaithful to her most off-year marriage. She miscarried one night when Holmes returned home from seeing a hat-check girl, drunk and unable to call a doctor. Rendering her barren. She then affirms her love for Warden, and tells him that if he became an officer, she could divorce Holmes and marry him. Warden reluctantly agrees to consider it. Pruitt and Maggio spend their liberty at the new Congress Club, a gentleman's club where Pruitt falls for Lorene. She wants to marry a proper man with a proper job, and live a proper life. Maggio and Staff Sergeant James R. Judson nearly come to blows at the club over Judson's loud piano playing. Later, Judson provokes Maggio by taking his photograph of his sister from him, kissing it, and whispering in Pruitt's ear. Maggio smashes a bar stool over Judson's head. Judson pulls a switchblade, but then, Warden intervenes. Judson backs down, but warns Maggio that sooner or later, he will end up in the stockade, where Judson is in charge. During the weekend liberty, while Pruitt is with Loreen at the new Congress Club, Maggio walks in drunk and in uniform having deserted his post. The military police arrest Maggio, and he is sentenced to six months in the stockade. Sergeant Gulovich later picks a fight with Pruitt while he is on detail, and a crowd gathers as the two start fighting. At first, Pruitt resorts only to body blows, and even then pulling his punches, but his fighting spirit re emerges and he comes close to knocking Gulovich out before Holmes, who had been watching for some time from outside the crowd finally steps in and stops the fight. Golovich accuses Pruitt of starting the fight, but when the man in charge of the detail says that it was Golovich, Holmes abruptly lets him off the hook and disperses the crowd. The entire incident is witnessed by the base commander, who orders an investigation by the inspector general. When the truth about Holmes is revealed to the commander he orders a court-martial, but when Holmes begs for an alternative, an aide suggests that Holmes resign his commission. The commander accepts the suggestion and orders Holmes' resignation within the hour. Holmes' replacement, Captain Ross, reprimands the others involved in the hazing and orders the boxing team's framed photographs and trophies be destroyed. He then demotes Golovich to private and puts him in charge of the latrine. Maggio escapes from the stockade and, after telling of the abuse he suffered at Judson's hands, dies in Pruitt's arms. After tearfully playing taps in tribute to his friend, Pruitt hunts Judson down and kills him with the same switchblade Judson pulled on Maggio earlier, 
but in so doing sustains a serious stomach wound, and so he goes into hiding at Lorene's house. The military is caught completely by surprise on Sunday morning when the Japanese commence a pre-dawn attack on Pearl Harbor. Against Lorene's wishes, Pruitt attempts to rejoin his company under cover of darkness, but is shot dead by a patrol guarding against possible saboteurs. Warden sadly notes the irony of the boxing tournament being cancelled because of the attack. When Karen finds out that Warden never applied for officer training, she realizes they have no future together, and regretfully sails back to the mainland with her husband. On board the ship, Lorene and Karen meet, and Lorene says that her fiancé, named Pruitt, was a bomber pilot who was heroically killed during the attack. Karen recognizes Pruitt's name, but says nothing. Hollywood legend has it that Frank Sinatra got the role in the film by means of his alleged mafia connections, and it was the basis for a similar subplot in The Godfather. However, that has been dismissed on several occasions by the cast and crew of the film. Director Fred Zinnemann commented that the legend about a horse's head having been cut off is pure invention, a poetic license on the part of Mario Puzo, who wrote The Godfather. One explanation of Sinatra's casting is that his then-wife Ava Gardner persuaded studio head Harry Cohn's wife to use her influence with him, this version is related by Kitty Kelly in her Sinatra biography. Joan Crawford and Gladys George were offered roles, but George lost her role when the director decided he wanted to cast the female roles against type, and Crawford's demands to be filmed by her own cameraman led the studio to take a chance on Deborah Kerr, also playing against type. Kim Stanley heavily campaigned for the role of Lorene. The on-screen chemistry between Lancaster and Kerr may have spilled off-screen, it was alleged that the stars became sexual partners during filming. Two songs are noteworthy. Reenlistment Blues, and From Here to Eternity, by Robert Wells and Fred Carker. Several of the novel's controversial plot points were changed or eliminated for the film to satisfy the production code office and the U.S. Army. Army cooperation was necessary in order to shoot on location at Schofield Barracks, use training aircraft, and obtain military footage of Pearl Harbor for use in the film, as well as for cost reasons. According to screenwriter Daniel Teradash, both the code office and the army were impressed by his script, which reduced the number of censorship problems. In the novel, Lorene was a prostitute at a brothel, but in the film, she is a hostess at a private social club. Karen's hysterectomy in the novel was caused by the unfaithful Holmes transmitting gonorrhea to her, but in the film, her hysterectomy resulted from a miscarriage, thus avoiding the topic of venereal disease. The changes were made to meet code office standards. In the novel, Several of the enlisted men fraternize with homosexuals, and one soldier commits suicide as a result, but homosexuality is not mentioned or directly explored in the film. Again, the change was made to satisfy the code office. However, J. E. Smith has written that the film's treatment of Judson's behavior towards Maggio has all the indications of sexual abuse, and therefore reintroduces the fear of homosexuality in the 1930s military that the rest of the script had to repress for obvious reasons of censorship. In the novel, Captain Holmes ironically receives his desired promotion, and is transferred out of the company. In the film, Holmes is forced to resign from the army under threat of court-martial for his ill-treatment of Pruitt. The army insisted on this change, which the filmmakers reluctantly made. Director Zinnemann later complained that the scene where Holmes is reprimanded was the worst moment in the film, resembling a recruiting short, and wrote, It makes me sick every time I see it. In the novel, Judson's systematic abuse of Maggio and other prisoners, including Pruitt himself at one point, is portrayed in detail. However, in the film, Maggio's abuse happens off screen, and is told only verbally to Pruitt, who remains free. The army required that the abuse of Magiana be shown, and that Judson's behavior towards Maggio be portrayed as a sadistic anomaly, and not as the result of army policy, as depicted in Jones's book. The filmmakers agreed, seeing these changes as improvements. Maggio, who survives and is discharged in the novel, dies in the film, having been combined with two other prisoner characters from the novel to add drama and make Maggio a stronger, more tragic figure. The army was further pacified by the filmmaker's inclusion of a line suggesting that Maggio's death was partially caused by his falling off a truck during a prison break, rather than solely by Judson's beatings. Opening to rave reviews, From Here to Eternity proved to be an instant hit with critics and public alike. The Southern California Motion Picture Council extolling, a motion picture so great in its starkly realistic and appealing drama that mere words cannot justly describe it. Variety agreed. The James Jones bestseller, From Here to Eternity, 
has become an outstanding motion picture in this smash screen adaptation. It is an important film from any angle, presenting Sako Entertainment for big business. The cast names are exceptionally good, the exploitation and word of mouth values are top notch, and the prospects in all play dates are very bright, whether special key bookings or general run. Of the actors, Variety went on to say. Burt Lancaster, whose presence adds measurably to the marquee weight of the strong cast names, wallops the character of Top Sergeant Milton Warden, the professional soldier who wet nurses a week, pompous commanding officer and the GIs under him. It is a performance to which he gives depth of character as well as the muscles which had gained marquee importance for his name. Montgomery Clift, with a reputation for sensitive, three-dimensional performances, adds another to his growing list as the independent GI who refuses to join the company boxing team, taking instead the treatment dished out at the CO's instructions. Frank Sinatra scores a decided hit as Angelo Maggio, of Ireland, likable Italo-American GI. While some may be amazed at this expression of Sinatra talent versatility, it will come as no surprise to those who remember the few times he has had a chance to be something other than a crooner in films. The New York Post applauded Frank Sinatra, remarking, he proves he is an actor by playing the luckless Maggio with a kind of doom gaiety that is bothrial and immensely touching. Newsweek also stated that, Frank Sinatra, a crooner long since turned actor, knew what he was doing when he plugged for the role of Maggio. John McCartan of The New Yorker concurred, writing that the film reveals that Frank Sinatra, in the part of Mr. Cliff's best friend who winds up in the stockade, is a first-rate actor. The cast agreed, Burt Lancaster commented in the book Sinatra, an American legend that, Sinatra's, fervor, his bitterness had something to do with the character of Maggio, but also with what he had gone through the last number of years. A sense of defeat and the whole world crashing in on him. They all came out in that performance. With a gross of $30.5 million equating to earnings of $12.2 million, From Here to Eternity was not only one of the top grossing films of 1953, but one of the ten highest grossing films of the decade. Adjusted for inflation, its box office gross would exceed $277 million U.S. dollars in 2017 dollars. Despite the positive response of the critics and public, the Army was reportedly not pleased with its depiction in the finished film, and refused to let its name be used in the opening credits. The Navy also banned the film from being shown to its servicemen, calling it derogatory of a sister's service and a discredit of the armed services. William Holden, who won the Best Actor Oscar for Shtalock 17, felt that Lancaster or Cliff should have won. Sinatra would later comment that he thought his performance of heroin addict Frankie Machine in The Man with the Golden Arm was more deserving of an Oscar than his role as Maggio. An unsuccessful 30-minute television pilot starring Darren McGavin as First Sergeant Warden, Roger Davis as Private Pruitt, and Tom Nardini as Private DiMaggio was made in 1966. In 1979, William Devane starred as First Sergeant Warden in a miniseries that became a television series in 1980. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.